On today's show, the Porsche Taycan finally gets its production reveal, along with its high-end price tag. Rematz showcases the arduous and expensive process of crash testing its upcoming C2 supercar, and Volkswagen pairs up with e-classics to offer conversions of classic Beatles with e-up hearts. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi folks, welcome to another roundup from the world of clean cars and energy. It's getting close to the Frankfurt Motor Show, so there's a lot to get through this week. We're starting with the Porsche Taycan. It's finally here. Revealed earlier this week, the high-end luxury four-door sports sedan will be offered in two different variants at launch, the Taycan Turbo and Taycan Turbo S, and they look to be very nicely appointed high-end rides. Turbo, in this case, is a holdover from Porsche's internal combustion engine cars and is supposed to give Porsche faithful an idea of performance, which isn't too shabby. Although, as many Tesla faithful have been pointing out, it doesn't beat Tesla. But as I've pointed out in my long detailed video on this car and its launch, it's not designed to cross shop and those who insist it is are missing the point. The Taycan and its six-figure price tag are in a completely different market. The Mercedes-Benz EQC has received a five-star crash test rating from Euro NCAP, managing a 96% rating in adult occupant tests and 90% in child occupant tests, which is actually higher than the Tesla Model 3 in the same tests. Unlike other SUVs, it doesn't do too badly in its vulnerable road user tests either, scoring a 75% score, which is higher than many other SUVs on the market, as well as a 75% on its safety assistance features. Since the launch of the Taycan this week, lots of people have been criticising the use of the name Turbo by Porsche in an electric vehicle. Among them, Elon Musk, who took to Twitter this week to make his own digs at the luxury German brand. And at the same time, Musk promised that he'd been sending a Tesla around the Nürburgring in Germany to set its own record time, a move clearly prompted by Porsche's four-door electric sedan record, the one I reported on last week. Musk's promised that this record attempt will happen in the next week. Crash testing is a necessary part of any car's journey into the marketplace, and hundreds of thousands of dollars are spent by automakers to prove their cars meet all of the required criteria. And this week, Rematz, I really hope I've got the pronunciation right this time, shared in a video the arduous process that it's been undertaking to ensure its Rematz C2 hypercar can be sold around the world. It doesn't have the budget of larger companies, but it wants to make sure its cars can be sold worldwide. It's an interesting thing to watch, but painful too. Lately, we've seen a number of automakers jump onto the EV myth-dispelling bandwagon. This week, Ford became the latest company to join in. It's just launched a series of videos dispelling common EV myths, you know, like you can't drive them in winter, using its Mustang-inspired crossover SUV as one of the vehicles it's used to do the myth-busting. It's the first time we've seen this vehicle in the wild, and while it is covered in camouflage, it looks to be progressing through its testing very nicely. With all the drama surrounding Boris and Brexit, don't even get me started, car sales in the UK haven't been all that high of late, but for one brand, Tesla, UK car sales haven't been bad at all. According to the Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders, the Tesla Model 3 became the third best-selling car in the UK in August, selling 2,082 examples. As Tesla is currently working through its backlog of Model 3 reservations in the UK, it's no surprise that sales are doing well, even though general auto sales aren't. Volkswagen's IDR race car has been busy setting records again, this time becoming the first electric car to tackle the famous Heaven's Gate Road on Tianmen Mountain in China. The time, 7 minutes and 38.5 seconds. You might remember from a year or so ago, Jaguar Land Rover sent a Range Rover plug-in hybrid up the same road from the bottom to the top. 
Unlike that attempt, in which the Range Rover climbed all the stairs to the top, the ID focused on just the road up to the stairs. And I've got to say, the IDR's attempt was damned fast. Earlier this summer, Ford controversially showcased its prototype F-150 electric pickup truck, towing one million pounds of pickup trucks and rail cars in what some people called a publicity stunt and others called fake news. But whatever your opinion, Ford confirmed to Autocar this week that the electric pickup it says it's building, which will be based off that prototype, will come to market before 2022. It's a vague statement that could mean late 2021, but it's good to see mainstream electric pickups on the way to the market. Ahead of next week's official reveal of the ID3 electric hatchback, Volkswagen has officially lowered the price of its e-Golf, knocking about 8% off the price of the 35.9 kilowatt hour battery pack version. At the same time, it's announced its refreshed e-up city car, also with a much larger 32.3 kilowatt hour battery pack than its predecessor, will start from €22,000 on the road. This repricing suggests that the ID3 will stay true to its price promises, but we'll know more about it next week. The US National Transportation Safety Board has completed its report into an accident last year in which a Tesla Model S ran into the back of a fire truck in California. The agency reports that while the fire truck was parked and had its emergency lights on, the driver did not notice the vehicle was stopped in front of him because he was focusing on eating at the time and not driving. It states that his inattention and over-reliance on autopilot and his ignoring guidance and warnings from Tesla was the cause of the crash. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Autopilot is not yet hands-off fully autonomous. Don't do it. As I noted earlier in the show, the longer range of Volkswagen E-Up will launch in Frankfurt next week, but it will also be launched alongside another vehicle using the same drivetrain and battery technology. Enter the Volkswagen E-Beetle, a classic bug converted by E-Classics in collaboration with Volkswagen. Unlike most conversions of vehicles that you see on the market, this uses off-the-shelf brand new parts sanctioned by Volkswagen and actually increases load base space into the bargain. There's no news on pricing, but I want this very badly. Volkswagen says it's working on a similar product for the Volkswagen Microbus. And finally, giant signs beside the road advertising the cost of petrol and diesel are a common sight in the modern age. But so far, nobody seems to have done anything similar for electric vehicle charging pricing. That is until McDonald's decided to do just that at all of its stores across Sweden. Taking the gas station model, it's using its famous golden arches to install digital signs showing the price of filling up at its rapid charging stations, plus the price of two of its most popular meals. Now, if only they could add an Impossible Burger or Beyond Meat patty to that menu and we'd be all set. And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Don't forget to tell your friends about the show. And as always, if you've got feedback, please do send it our way. We love hearing from you. Make sure you also hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And while you're at it, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? It is 100% renewable. It's easy to make the change and you'll be helping New Zealand towards a zero emissions future. I'll be back soon with a new episode. But until then, thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.